supervised learning updates the parameters of a neural network to match predicted class labels with the ground truth labels. The construction of these ground truth class vectors is typically done with one-hot encoding, but other techniques such as label smoothing and knowledge distillation have been developed to overcome the limitations of one-hot encoded ground truth class labels. Meta Pseudo Labels uses the meta learning framework to dynamically adapt the target distribution or ground truth class labels throughout training of a student classification network to maximize its resulting validation set accuracy. This is done by training the classification model or student network on pseudo labels labeled by a teacher network. The teacher network is then updated to maximize the classification model's accuracy on the validation set after it trains and updates itself through backpropagation and supervised learning on the pseudo labels from the teacher network. This involves an interesting gradient through a gradient operation to train the teacher network. Meta pseudo labels achieves 86.9% top one ImageNet accuracy through semi-supervised learning with additional data and also impressive performances in the limited data settings. The authors also introduce a reduced MPL framework to avoid the memory bottleneck of having two high capacity models in memory for the meta learning framework. This video will explain meta pseudo labels from researchers at Google AI. This video will explain meta pseudo labels from researchers at Google AI. Meta pseudo labels is a new way to use meta learning to adapt the ground truth class labels during training by using a teacher network to label data and then a student network that learns from those labels. A quick overview of the meta pseudo labels algorithm is that a teacher model is trained along with a student model to set the student's target distributions and adapt to the student's learning state. So typically these target distributions are these one hot encoded vectors where you might have like zero cat, one dog, and then zero for all of the, of the other classes in the case of say CIFAR 10. So the idea here is to have the teacher network produce the way of labeling the data points. So say 0.03 cat, 0.7 dog, uh, 0.04 horse. These kind of distributions are gonna be assigned by the teacher network rather than heuristically encoded with something like one hot encoding, label smoothing, or even the knowledge distillation pipeline with the uh, temperature tuning. So then the idea is to adapt these target distributions to the student's learning state. So the way this pipeline works is that the teacher network parameterized by phi is gonna take in the same training data set and then produce a pseudo label distribution. And then the student network is gonna to try to fit this label distribution that was produced by the teacher network. So it's gonna do back propagation using the cross entropy loss function between the predictions from the student network Y prime and then these uh, pseudo labels Q phi of X. So it's gonna back prop this and then update the parameters to theta T plus one. So now these new parameters that have been updated by training on the pseudo labels from the teacher network are then gonna be evaluated to provide a reward signal for the teacher network by taking those parameters and then having them classify a held out validation set. So the performance on the validation set is the reward signal that goes back through the teacher by taking a gradient through a gradient, which is something we'll get into more in the, uh, later on in the video. So the idea is that the teacher model is gonna be training, uh, changing this distribution of class labels to maximize the performance of the student network from the held out validation set. These are some examples of the most common target distributions or ground truth class label vectors Y that are used in machine learning. The most common of which is one hot encoded vectors. This is how data sets like CIFAR 10 are labeled. If this is the case of a dog image. In the class label corresponding to that image, you'd have a one in the position of the dog index and then zero everywhere else for the other class labels. So say one dog, zero cat, zero truck, ship. This is how the CIFAR 10 data set is labeled. So one problem with labeling data sets of one hot encoded vectors is that the model is gonna have these overconfident or overfitted predictions to this kind of a class label distribution. Because say it applies any probability density to another class, it's gonna have a penalty from the cross entropy loss for doing so. So if it say sees this dog image and tries to label it as 0.75 dog and 0.2 cat, because it's unsure whether it's a cat or a dog, it's gonna be penalized for that as if the cat is just as different from a dog as a truck or a ship or a frog or these other CIFAR 10 classes. So one solution to the overconfident predictions or overfitting of the one hot encoded vectors is label smoothing. So label smoothing is where you apply this uniform weight to all the other uh, class labels in the class label vector. And then another solution to assigning these target distributions is knowledge distillation. Knowledge distillation in the form of self-training with noisy student currently has the state of the art for ImageNet classification. And it's also a really powerful technique for model compression, such as say distill BERT, where you have these high capacity models and then you use the high capacity model to produce a new class label uh, distribution that is better than the uh, one hot encoded vector for training the student network. And the student network learns on a combination of this uh, distillation class distribution, as well as the ground truth one hot encoded vectors.
So these are some examples of different target distributions that have been explored in machine learning and are commonly used to prevent overfitting and then to you know, train these models with supervised learning. So a quote from the paper is that from the success of these heuristic tricks, it is clear that how to construct the target distribution plays an important role in the algorithm design and a proper method could lead to a sizable gain, motivating this exploration for meta-learning the target distributions during training. So again, we have this problem of what should be this target distribution? Should we have one hot encoded class label vectors? Should we smoothen out the labels by putting uniform weight on the other class labels? Or should we use this teacher to student pipeline in knowledge distillation? But the solution explored in this paper is to meta learn the pseudo label distribution or the targets that the student network is gonna be trying to fit during training. There are two phases of learning in the meta pseudo labels framework. In phase one, the student learns from the teacher. The parameters theta of the student classification network are updated by taking the cross entropy loss between the predictions p sub theta of x and then the pseudo label distribution that is produced when you pass these x data points through the teacher network parameterized by phi denoted q sub phi of x to denote this uh, new pseudo label distribution that comes out of the teacher. Phase two is the teacher learns from the student's validation loss. This is a much more complex way of structuring this loss, this gradient through a gradient meta learning idea of training the teacher network. So the teacher network is evaluated on the validation set performance of the student network after it updates its parameters to theta t plus one. So the way that this reward is propagated back into the teacher's parameters phi is that you have to take the uh, how, derivative of how much each of these uh, five parameters and their labeling the data points impacts the gradient of the student network to change it in the direction of this validation loss. It's difficult to completely derive this idea of gradient through a gradient. And in practice, if you're using frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch, you can utilize automatic differentiation to automatically implement this for you. And you don't have to exactly know the math of how, say, this parameter from X1 input to the hidden state A in the teacher network gets this loss signal from the student network that is then updated with the gradient of this new labeled data set and then moved in the direction of the validation loss. But the idea, the high level idea, and I think maybe visualizing these two networks even though in practice, the teacher network is gonna be a multi-layer perceptron like this, but the student network is one of these high capacity classification models like ResNet, Wide ResNet, or EfficientNet. So the idea is you wanna say, update this weight from the input to a hidden state in the teacher network, and you're gonna to try to take the partial derivative with respect to this weight in the teacher network with respect to the validation loss on the, the student network after at uh, theta t plus one on that validation set. So this is trained with policy gradients on this reward signal because this isn't like, uh, y prime minus y, there's no ground truth with respect to the validation loss that the student uh, achieves. So you're uh, just taking that uh, validation loss reward and treating that as like a reward in like say uh, Pac-Man or Atari and using policy gradients to update the parameters that basically say like if uh, this parameter uh, contributed a lot to the output and then you get a high reward, do more of this, like increase the weight from this connection to do more of it, to get more of this reward. That's kind of the high level idea of policy gradients. But the idea is that in order to get this derivative, to find out like how much of this weight contributed to the validation loss, you have to take a gradient through a gradient, which is a pretty complex idea that's maybe uh, better explained in the next equation from the paper. Hopefully this equation from the paper will further explain the idea of taking a gradient through a gradient to update the parameters phi from the teacher network with respect to the parameters theta t plus one that are evaluated on the validation set. So the idea was we're taking a gradient through a gradient. So the parameters theta t plus one that are responsible for this validation loss reward signal we're trying to update the teacher network with are updated by taking the parameters theta t and then updating them with a gradient. So we wanna know how much each parameter in phi is responsible for the gradient that updates this. So you're taking the derivative with respect to phi of this validation loss. Well, phi is, uh, you know, contributes to this validation loss through the gradient. So you have to find out, you know, how much each of these parameters in the phi network you know, as in something like this, how much does this parameter of the fee network or this uh, parameter contribute to the gradient? And then the gradient is what updates the parameters and gives you this new validation loss. So you're taking the partial derivative of fee with respect to this gradient through gradient idea, which is a little complicated, but uh, you know, really an interesting idea with the meta learning and this meta pseudo labels algorithm. The next idea introduced in the meta pseudo labels is to avoid this memory requirement of having two high capacity classification models in memory. Because say you have an efficient net as the teacher network as well as the student network, now you have to keep both these models in memory, especially when you're doing the gradient update for the teacher network. So the idea to avoid that is to first train a large teacher network on the labeled data set and then use it to produce this new distribution on the unlabeled data and then you use a smaller teacher network. So say you originally train the teacher network with like an efficient net and then you move it to a multi-layer perceptron because all it's doing now is adjusting the original distribution that was produced by this high capacity model. 
So this high capacity model is already producing a pretty useful uh, target distribution as in knowledge distillation. And then the smaller teacher has enough capacity to be adapting it during training as in the meta learning framework. The authors are going to test the performance of meta pseudo labels in the limited data setting as well as the semi supervised learning setting. Semi supervised learning is responsible for most of the ImageNet state of the arts, like self training with Noisy Student, where they have the labeled ImageNet, and they also leverage this unlabeled JFT 300 million data set to get more performance out of the model. Also, uh, the billion scale weekly semi supervised learning framework from Facebook uses the labeled ImageNet data set and the unlabeled uh, Instagram images that are weekly labeled with their hashtags to take advantage of this semi supervised learning framework which is probably gonna be the paradigm that leads forward since it's so easy to get this unlabeled data compared to labeled data. So they're experimenting with meta pseudo labels on the efficient net architecture for the student network on the full CIFAR 10 ImageNet Street View House Numbers data set plus extra unlabeled data. So in the case of CIFAR 10, this is tiny images. In ImageNet, it's YFCC 100 million. In Street View House Numbers, there's an additional like 500,000 data points that come with the data set to use optionally if you wanna test out uh, these kind of algorithms. So they achieved 98.6% CIFAR 10 accuracy and then 86.9% top one image net. And then here are some other papers to check out if you're interested in semi-supervised learning that have also uh, come out recently and are really successful in this kind of space. These are the results of meta pseudo labels in the semi-supervised learning framework compared with supervised learning and then the self-training with noisy student pipeline. You see gains in the CIFAR 10 data set, small gains on the street view house numbers, and then big gains on the image net data set. One reason that the authors point towards these small gains for the Street View House numbers is that the extra unlabeled data in Street View House numbers is in, it's in the distribution. So there's this distinction between out of distribution data and in distribution data. So in the case of ImageNet, where you're trying to take in this new data from this YFCC 100 million data, you would call that out of uh, distribution data because it's not like the ImageNet data. Whereas the Street View House numbers, that extra data is like really the same exact data that the training set has as in terms of this like kind of underlying distribution idea. So the idea here is that the uh, meta pseudo labels, this adaptive adjustment of changing the uh, labels during training is more crucial when the uh, extra unlabeled data is more out of distribution. So if you're uh, dealing with a computer vision problem and you're curious if this algorithm is gonna work for your problem, it's interesting to say, you know, is the unlabeled data you have, how out of distribution is it? How noisy is it? And this uh, MPL meta pseudo label framework is likely to have a bigger gain if this is noisier data compared to in distribution data. The authors also test the meta pseudo labels algorithm in the limited data setting where you have say only 4,000 labeled images in CIFAR 10, 1,000 in Street View House numbers, or 10% of the labeled data in ImageNet. In this case, you see the performance of meta pseudo labels compared to supervised learning with all the labels, sim CLR, fixed match, or unsupervised data augmentation, which are all other algorithms that are successful at doing this kind of learning with limited data. This plot shows the performance of these models with respect to the different limited data settings changes as you increase the percentage of labeled data points. The interesting part about this plot is this uh, top left area where you have the smaller percentage of labeled data and you see a huge gain of the unsupervised data augmentation plus the meta pseudo labels algorithm compared to supervised learning or the rand augment uh, data augmentation algorithm. This table shows the gains of meta pseudo labels with respect to the CIFAR 10 limited data setting and then the Street View House number limited data setting. So you see the performance of different algorithms like just training with supervised learning on this limited data using that label smoothing uh, way of putting uniform weights on the other class labels then using supervised learning plus meta pseudo uh, labels, and then stacking meta pseudo labels with the RAND augment and unsupervised data augmentation algorithms. These are some of the algorithms that are explored to stack on top of meta pseudo labels. Unsupervised data augmentation enforces predictions Y given X to be consistent with the same X data point after it's gone through a data augmentation. So in some cases, data augmentation might mean like rotating an image, translating it, or horizontally flipping it. In the case of natural language processing, it might mean uh, translating the sentence to German and then translating it back to English, which is known as a uh, back translation. There's other different ways of augmenting data points and then enforcing this cycle consistency to have similar predictions on the data point uh, before and after it's been augmented. Another of these algorithms that's stacked on top of meta pseudo labels is RAND augment. RAND augment is this automated data augmentation algorithm similar to uh, like auto augment or population based augmentation. But the idea here is to have this simpler parameterization of the space that actually shows to work better with respect to constructing these uh, automated data augmentation uh, pipelines. And the next uh, sort of algorithm to be looking at as well and comparing this with is self training with noisy student, which is this really popular way of doing knowledge distillation, which is where you uh, take the pseudo labels, you apply a lot of noise with respect to training the student model on that uh, teacher target distribution, which is the whole idea of meta pseudo labels is 
looking at the ways to structure this target distribution to train these neural networks on. The authors explore the behavior of the teacher network in the meta pseudo label framework. So they've learned that the meta pseudo label uh, teacher fits the validation gradient. It's not just label corrections and it's not only a regularization or preventing overfitting strategy. The authors explore this idea that the teacher encourages the student's training gradient to be similar to the student's validation gradient on this two moons data set because it's really difficult for them to uh, do this kind of cosine similarity between validation and training data gradients with these larger data sets like CIFAR-10 or ImageNet. So they show the cosine similarity between the uh, training and validation data's gradient with respect to the training progress and showing that the uh, meta pseudo learning framework, the teacher is trying to steer the gradient in the direction of this validation uh, data sets gradient as well. The next idea is to explore whether the teacher network is simply performing label correction or trying to mimic the behavior of supervised learning with perfect labels. So this plot is showing that if it was doing this, then these accuracies of the student network should be high as well and have a similar kind of curve as supervised learning. So this is showing that the teacher network isn't just trying to fit the training data, it's trying to help uh, with this regularization and preventing overfitting. This visualization shows that the teacher network isn't just doing uh, preventing of overfitting with respect to how it's labeling this data. And you see interesting behaviors with respect to the developments of how it's labeling each of these data points in the CIFAR-10 data set throughout the training. You see that it, the label with the uh, highest confidence doesn't change. It doesn't get steeper between uh, 50 and 75%. It doesn't do things like flipping labels or dampening distributions in obvious ways that are typically heuristically explored with respect to uh, you know, doing regularization in the class label space. Another interesting algorithm in the space of meta-learning these different components that make up the supervised learning problem is generative teaching networks. Generative teaching networks have a generator that uses this gradient through a gradient in order to uh, generate this data set that is used to train the student network. So it could be interesting to see if you could stack this meta-pseudo labeling or having this adaptive labeling with the generated data set as well, although it'd definitely be a confusing gradient, or you could maybe uh, stack the generator and the labeler, sort of similar to how like uh, AlphaGo Zero combines the policy and value network into one architecture. But it's definitely an interesting kind of uh, space of emerging algorithms, these meta-learning algorithms that are generating data, uh, generating adaptive labels during the training, a lot of different areas where meta-learning is being developed and producing these interesting algorithms. Thanks for watching this explanation of meta pseudo labels, a really interesting meta learning algorithm that adapts the target distribution for the student network as it's learning throughout training to maximize the accuracy on a held out validation set. This is a really interesting use of meta learning and this gradient through gradient training to have the teacher student paradigm where the teacher is taking apart this different component of the supervised learning framework, particularly in this case, the target distribution. And then the student is learning with the teacher network in this simultaneous uh, like dual optimization or co-evolution framework of training these two models in the meta learning idea. This is responsible for a really high accuracy on ImageNet with the full data set plus extra unlabeled data, as well as interesting performances on the limited data setting. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.